Three days later, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, and another 40,000 were killed instantly. The heat and light gave horrific burns to all within two and a half miles. It damaged the retina of the eye and raised lesions and blisters. The victims were filmed, though the pictures were kept secret for years. 16-year-old Sumiteru Taniguchi was delivering letters on his bicycle at the time of the blast. The flash burn flayed the skin from his back. After the bomb had gone off, I lay on my stomach, unable to move, for a year and nine months, waiting for my wounds to heal. I suffered throughout. Nobody thought I would survive. Even the American cameraman and crew thought I was going to die. In the weeks and months that followed, many who had no visible injuries sickened. They felt weak from what was soon recognized as the effect of radiation. Thousands more died. Others remained ill and would continue to suffer for years to come. The Japanese surrender, five days after Nagasaki, was a moment of intense relief for the Allies. Sheldon Johnson was a young GI from Utah, serving in the Pacific. I was in the Philippines, ready to move on to Japan for an invasion, and when uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs were dropped, uh, in a sense, I thought, well, I feel bad that all those lives were lost, but it certainly saved mine because uh, I would have been in an invasion force. And um, I thought the overall net effect was that it saved many, many lives. And it was a beautiful, great thing. I will leave the bomb that struck Hiroshima. Was the answer to a fighting for his friends? At that moment in 1945, few foresaw how the bomb would bring a new arms race and unprecedented fear around the world. Fearful of America's new power, Joseph Stalin put his secret police chief, Lorente Beria, in charge of a drive to acquire a bomb at any cost. Starting in 1946, the Soviet Union built ten secret cities, known as Atomgrads. Thousands of scientists and engineers were sent to work in them. After fighting in the Red Army, Arkady Brish was dispatched to an Atomgrad in the Urals. There was a burning desire to make a powerful weapon of our own and catch up with the Americans. Starting in 1947, my colleagues and I worked night and day to develop the new science and master the technology. The Soviet scientists were under intense pressure to deliver results quickly, and Beria's secret police force was obsessed with the danger of spies. We don't know why, but one of our team was banned from work, transferred to the library, then dismissed. When two colleagues in civilian dress, as we called them, came to arrest him, he went into a back room and shot himself. By 1949, the Soviets had what they wanted. The atomic race had begun in earnest. 
From Las Vegas, America's legalized gambling center, Cathay cameramen secure exclusive pictures of secret atomic weapon tests at Frenchman's flat, 75 miles away. Here goes the first one. Seventy-five miles away, remember. Of five tested, this is the biggest. In other tests, the military practiced the tactics that would be needed for wars of the future. They planned to send ground troops onto the battlefield after a nuclear strike, and they wanted to know more about the physical effects on the soldiers. The Army and Marine Corps competed to see how close they could get their men to a test blast. You are here to participate in an atomic maneuver. This is not a haphazard maneuver. Careful planning for it started months back. Watched from a safe distance, this explosion is one of the most beautiful sights ever seen by man. You're probably saying, so it's beautiful. What makes it so dangerous? Radiation, this is the one new effect obtained by the use of an atomic weapon. Truthfully, it's the least important as far as the soldier on the ground is concerned. The radiation level may be high, but if you follow orders, you'll be moved out in time to avoid sickness. Finally, if you receive enough gamma radiation to cause sterility or severe sickness, you'll be killed by blast, flying debris, or heat anyway. Sixty thousand troops took part in standard uniforms without any special protection. Civilian scientists warned that the soldiers were too close, but the military went ahead just the same. When we were brought here, a voice from an unseen loudspeaker said, Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to the land of the giant mushrooms. You're going to be closer to a nuclear weapon or an atomic bomb than anyone since Hiroshima. It left a very eerie feeling at the time I heard that. Tom Saffer had been in the Marines just four months. He was 22. We were told to kneel, put our forearms over our eyes, I mean, and close our eyes tightly then the countdown started. Our right shoulder was towards the blast. We were told not to look up, and none of us dare looked. Then the countdown started. Five, four, three, two, one. You heard a sharp click and this intense heat on the back of the exposed neck. And the most shocking part of this was you could see the two bones in your forearm in a bright red light. Within a few seconds, the shock wave from the bomb hit these trenches, and I was immediately thrown from one side of the trench wall to the other. And I was frightened beyond belief. After the gyrating and the shaking stopped, we stood up and looked at the fireball escalating into the troposphere. Nobody said a word. We were all in a state of shock. They were being used as guinea pigs, establishing what was possible. The uh, radiological safety person from the Army came up with a Geiger counter and put it over us, and you could hear it clicking, clicking, and then one man dusted us off with a broom because the prevailing thought was you get rid of the dust, you get rid of the radiation. Though the tests were secret, there were small communities near enough to see what was going on. St. George, Utah, was 150 miles across the desert. 
Residents watched the flashes on the horizon and worried when clouds of dust followed one bomb, later called Dirty Harry. In a specially made film, the atomic 